Hey guys, Tiny Bryson here, and I noticed that a lot of you want to get into picking stocks. Like, do I buy this stock or that stock or Tesla or Walmart or Apple? What exactly do you buy? And by the way, you guys send me DMs all the time, ask me, tell me, would you buy this stock right here? So that's why in this video, I'm going to give you 15 things to look for when you're actually going to go ahead and buy a stock with your hard earned money. Tommy, did you make these things up? The answer is no. I wish, but I don't have a 40 year track list just yet when it comes to investing. So I got this checklist from a guy called Phil Fisher that Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, and also Charlie Munger, all millionaires and billionaires basically learn from. Phil Fisher, I'll put a link right here to the book. Also down below that way if you wanna get the book, go ahead and get it. It's called Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. And it should help you a lot when it comes to, hey, what stocks do I buy? But when do I actually go ahead and sell? That book should help you out a ton. Now, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell so get notified on top. I also destroy the like button. Now, let's get right into the video. Now, the first thing you need to look for when it comes to a company is basically, does the company have a strong product to keep sales and earnings consistent for the next few years. Meaning, for example, does Apple have strong products to basically give them more money and more earnings? The answer is obviously they do. They make a ton of money from selling iPhones. But more importantly, you also have to look at the product relatively to how much the company is actually worth as a whole, especially in the industry. So for example, let's say the iPhone was only 10% of the Apple sales, okay? In reality, that means the product, although it's successful, it is not relatively that important for Apple. But in this case, the iPhone is basically one of the biggest products that Apple actually has. So basically, having a strong product is going to be important for the future of the company. So look for companies that have strong products to help earnings and also longevity stick to the company. Now, number two, does the management have interest to basically develop new products to then go ahead and deliver more sales and earnings once, for example, the old products already went obsolete. Let's say, for example, that Apple stopped at the iPhone 1, just like the iPhone. Did they make an iPhone 2 or 3 or 4 or 5? Now we're at 12. By the time you watch this video, it'll be like a 15 or 20, whatever it is. The answer is, for Apple, the answer is yes, right? Because basically, the management at Apple is always developing new products. So when one product goes obsolete, they have a new one coming in to go ahead and hook you and basically get more revenue and also earn a lot more money. So you don't want a company that although they have, for example, a great products like cassettes or CDs back in the 90s, they don't have anything else once those products are actually gone. You want a company that's constantly trying to innovate in a way, but again, it depends on the industry, okay? The waste management industry, or for example, the funeral industry, there is not a lot of innovation going on there, so they're probably not developing new products, but just make sure the industry is relative to what the company is actually doing. For phones, every single year, we need a new one, okay? So that's why Apple spends a lot of money in research and development. Now, number three, how effective is the company when it comes to spending money on research and development? Now, by the way, research and development is basically the money companies spend to research stuff and develop them and then basically earn more money, okay? That's all the company is here for, to basically earn more money for its shareholders. So how effective does a company grab their money and spend it to develop new products? Every single dollar they spend should give them basically, virtually, a lot more money than they actually spend to go ahead and create a new product. So for example, if Apple spends a million dollars every single year on R&D, and by the way, they spend a lot more money, the answer is when they actually come up with the product that has to make more money, they actually went ahead and spent when it came to research and development. There are bad companies out there that spend a ton of money on R&D, but don't come up with anything. So just when you see, for example, a large number, it does not mean the company is good to go. Make sure you verify what their intent is with the R&D and what they're actually going to create and what the potential sales are actually going to be. And by the way, you can find the research development numbers basically in the income statement, okay? In the finances of the business you're actually looking for. Now, number four, does the company actually have an above average sales organization? For example, when it comes to Coca-Cola or sodas, soft drink, Coca-Cola does a very good job at making you want those soft drinks. Apple and iPhone's privacy, they do a very good job of wanting to sell you an iPhone. If a company, for example, does not do a very good job with sales, in reality, the company is going to fail. No sales 
no revenue, no money, sounds like bankruptcy to me. So always make sure, for example, because in business, in capitalism especially, there's always someone else, competition, looking to take your place. And if the company does not have a strong sales team, usually they're not going to make it anywhere. So always look at the sales of the organization and how it's growing over time at what the incentives actually are for the sales team to sell products. Make sure they're ethical, okay? Because if they're not ethical, in reality, you can have a sales team doing things that are not ethical and legal just to make a bonus and also make some extra money. And by the way, guys, you can find all of this information in the investor relations of the company. So go to the website, click investor and find your investor relation. It'll tell you everything you need to know about the management and how everything actually works and especially how much they actually get paid. Very important. Number five, does the company have good profit margins? You don't want to invest into a company where basically this sell, by the way, these products right here are the best in the entire world, right? They make it for like, maybe like $10, 15 bucks, sell it for like 200 or $300. Glasses have an excellent profit margin. But for example, Coca-Cola has a profit margin of between 30% to 60%. Apple around 30%. In reality, you wanna find a company with a good profit margin. That way, if things slow down and need to cut prices, they can actually do that without actually suffering. Profit margins are very, 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 very important when it comes to company performance, especially for the future. You don't want a company that basically says, hey, my profit margin is like around 5%. Well, if something goes wrong, what are you gonna do? Most likely nothing, you're going to lose money and have to go into a massive amount of debt. At least the company will, okay? So be very careful with the profit margins of a company. Number six, what is the company doing to maintain or actually increase profits for the future? For example, is the company working on research and development? Are they actually making the process, making the product a lot more smoother, a lot more cheaper, and a lot more efficient? Very important. And on top of that, how is the brand presence, okay? Whenever I say phone, you think Apple, Samsung. Whenever I say TV, you probably think LG or Samsung or Toshiba. Whenever I say, for example, buying things online, you probably think about Amazon, right? So the idea is, what are those companies doing to maintain profits and also increase them over time? You don't want a company that's good today, but it's going to be bad tomorrow. It's all about the long term. Now, number seven, does the company have an outstanding labor and personal relationship with its employees. Now, what exactly does that mean? It means having employees that are happy to work for that company. For example, whenever I go to the Apple store, everyone there is extremely happy to be there. Best Buy, the same thing. Costco, the same thing. Whenever an employee is happy to be there, Amazon, the same thing also. Employees need to be happy doing their work because if they're not, usually that's going to make the company also suffer. So also pay attention to the employee side and what exactly is going on with the employees and how the company that you're treating their employees. Very important to potential company growth in the future. Number eight, does a company have an outstanding executive relation? Now tell me, what does this mean exactly? It means, for example, is a CEO solid, good reputation, good pay, and also showing signs of very good results and improvements in the company? For example, a company like Alcoa, the executive there, the CEO, changed everything around to the point where Alcoa became one of the biggest companies, okay, when it came to what they actually did. However, if you have a bad CEO, or for example, a company that's basically owned mostly by family members, and they basically put a CEO in there that's like a family member, like Uncle Bob, but they do a terrible job, the answer is you don't want to be an investor there because usually the management is going to be very important to how the company actually performs. So make sure the executive there, the CEO, and also the CFO, all those people, high management, have a good reputation, get good pay, good compensation, but on top of that, most likely have a really, really, really good reputation when it comes to their feel and what they actually do. Now, number nine, does the company have depths when it comes to its management? Meaning, for example, from the upper level of management to the lower level of management, there's a lot of good talent in there. For example, I like how in Starbucks, you can start as a barista, then become a regional manager if you want to, and eventually work yourself up to become the CEO of Starbucks. To me, that's awesome. Meaning, for example, does this company 
basically support people growing within the company to go ahead and take the head spot. That to me is awesome because it means basically they have a lot of talent in the company to go ahead and rise and rise and rise. It's kind of like having a ladder. You don't want to invest into a company where basically someone is stuck in a job and can no longer move from there. And there's basically no ladder, just basically like a step. Okay. You work here, you stay here, you go nowhere. I like Starbucks where basically you're a barista, become a regional manager or a manager of the company, and then eventually might even become a CEO. That is great because being in, you can actually take advantage of great talent within the company and not always have to go outside for talent, which is actually awesome as an investor. Now, number 10, how good are the company's cost analysis and accounting control? Meaning, for example, you don't want to invest into a company that basically does not control is costs. Kind of like, for example, hey, what happens if Apple is a great company but has zero cash, a ton of debt, and is basically losing sales every single year? Do you want to invest into that? The answer is probably going to be no. You want a company that controls its costs, its operations, and basically improves sales and also efficiency, but is also growing over time. That's what you basically want. You don't want a company that the better they do, the worse they're actually doing financially. For example, WeWork was one of those companies that basically spent a ton of money and had a lot of problems when it came to management also. Number 11, does the company have something that gives it an edge over its competition? For example, Apple, or for example, Geico. Geico is an insurance company and they have very low prices. Can anyone just go ahead and join the entire insurance company? The answer is no. Competition is gonna have a hard time taking down Geico. Or for example, Coca-Cola. If I gave you a billion dollars, like Warren Buffett says all the time, could you make another Coca-Cola? Most likely no, because basically it's not just the drinks, but it's more about the brand of Coca-Cola and what they actually accomplished over the past few years or so, like a lot of years, okay? Coca-Cola has been around forever now. But the idea is that what does the company have that gives it an edge over its competition? Not just the products, but it's something special about the brand itself and what they actually do. Apple, Coca-Cola, and a lot of companies out there have this, but you have to go ahead and find what that edge actually is. Number 12, does a company have a short-term range or for example, long-term range when it comes to profits? I personally don't want to invest in companies that only think short-term and don't think, for example, long-term. For example, Amazon was a company that was losing a lot of money over a lot of years, but in reality, everything they were spending money on was to basically help them in the future. To the point today where Amazon is one of the biggest companies in the US, right? Because they invested a ton of money inside of themselves and thought about long-term and not just short-term. You don't want a company where everything they do is all about the short-term, 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 because basically that could lead to doing some very illegal things and unethical things just to get, for example, some good short-term numbers. It's all about the long terms, especially when it comes to analyzing a company. To me, that's very important. Number 13 here, and very important, is basically, could the company continue to grow in the future without going ahead and diluting your current shares as a stockholder? Meaning, for example, do I want to invest into a company that to basically expand and grow in the future? They have to go ahead and basically issue out more shares and then make my shares basically mean less valuable, okay? Do I want that? The answer is probably gonna be no. I want to invest into a company where basically they have enough cash and resources to go ahead, grow the company without going ahead and diluting or basically diminishing my share of the company and my profits of the company as a stockholder. Kind of like for example, I invest into X companies. They go ahead, issue out more shares, and now my shares are not worth the same anymore. Do you want that? Most likely, no. But if the company has a lot of cash, then you can go ahead, do those things, expand, and basically you get to profit from it also. So it's very important. Invest into companies who can actually go ahead and expand because they have their own cash and resources also. Now, number 14, and we're getting to the end here. I don't know why I'm saying this. I ran out of numbers a long time ago. Number 14, does the management talk freely to investors about the good and also the bad? I love Warren Buffett, okay? Because basically, he talks to you about the good, but also the bad. If the management of a company is very loose lip about the good things, but very tight lip about the bad things going on, usually that's a bad sign of management. Because basically, oh, we had an excellent year last year, everything was fine, but what happened like yesterday? Oh, we're not gonna talk about that just yet, but yeah, last year everything was fine. You don't wanna be a part of that. That's what I'm saying there. Number 15 here, and the last one here, does the company have a management of unquestionable integrity? 
Now, when I think about that, I think about, for example, Apple, um, Berkshire Hathaway. I don't think about banks. I don't think about oil companies, but I do think about those really big companies where basically the management has your best intent always in hand. For example, Warren Buffett. Integrity level is literally on 100. Now guys, overall, those are the 15 things you wanna look for whenever you're going to go ahead and invest into a stock or a company, whatever it is, okay? And those points were basically developed and created by Phil Fisher, one of the legendary investors when it comes to making a lot of money in the stock market. But guys, overall, comment down below and let me know if it was helpful, if you learned anything, and on top of that, make sure you go ahead and read this book right here. Very important, very helpful, and help you a lot when it comes to investing in the stock market. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Make sure to also like this video if you liked it. On top of that, also, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified about the video. And before I go, if you wanna talk to me or text me, Join my Patreon, link down below, send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And if you want to see exactly my portfolio, how much money I make on dividends, well, here's that video right here. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.